day you guys this is natasia and i'm using the buffalo plaid technique to make this beautiful soap if you want to see how i did it get your wine ready and let's get right into this video good day everyone welcome to my channel i am natasia and i am making a buffalo plaid soap it is a technique I learned through the Soap Challenge Club. And if you're interested in joining, it is great. We all get together and share techniques and ideas. And it's a great experience if you're a soaper and you want to know how to soap and make different designs. Um, so I'll leave that link in the description box below. So I decided to take a well, my approach to this design is basically like plaid, guys. You know how the each box, every other box is a different color? So, <clears throat> I decided I wanted to do a marble kind of design box in my soap. And it reminded me of grapes and a vineyard. So, I chose that theme for my soap. Here you see me mixing um, colors together. These colors are Grape Ape from Mad Micah's, um, Titanium Dioxide, and the third one, oh, I can't think of the name, but I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> but I wanted that those contrasting colors together, and I'm going to mix them. If you're a new subscriber, you are so awesome. Thank you for subscribing. I love it. If you're an existing subscriber holding me down, you are so awesome. You know that already. And if you're just stopping by to watch, welcome. You're always welcome. Right now, you're just going to see me creating my individual squares to put inside the soap. So, guys, this took me about three days to do. Um, because first, I had to make the individual squares that's going to go inside the bar. And then the other two colors I'm going to pour are colors that I'm going to mix as I do each layer. You'll see what I mean <laughs> while I'm doing it. And guys, I know this video is on the longest side of the ones that I normally do, but listen, relax, get some wine, get some cheese, get some grapes, get some apples, some pears, and just sit back, relax, and watch me do all this work, make all these mistakes and recoveries. You can just relax and watch me. Don't worry. Here is soap dough. So, and here are my end beds. Now, <laughs> guys, what does this look like to you? What does that look like to you? Because <laughs> those are supposed to be grapes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, like I said, it's a vineyard theme that I was envisioning. And here is soap dough. Now, if you're a soaper and you've been doing it for a minute, you kind of know what soap dough is. But basically, it's when you mix your lye water and your oils and butters together. Um, you mix it thoroughly, probably till you get to a trace. And then you pour it in something like a Ziploc bag or um, plastic wrap. And you wrap it tight so there's no air that can get to it. 
and then you let it sit and when you do that it saponifies and it does turn into soap but it doesn't get a chance to get very hard and you can keep it in that state that clay like play-doh state for a long period of time and you can make things out of it you can make in beds and shapes and things of that nature and decorate your soap which is awesome now that's definitely something I learned through the soap challenge club there is um, a soaper that I follow on Instagram um, her Instagram she's I think the name of her company is called sorcery soaps sorcery soaps I'm gonna put it on the screen and put it in the description box that's she makes a whole bunch of um, soap dough for individuals if you want to buy it instead of trying to do it yourself you can buy it directly from her which is awesome and but you can make it on your own and one of the challenges we did we had to um, use soap dough to create um, a pattern in our soap and we were literally just taking a whole bunch of colors and just putting them in ziploc bags and letting them sit for like a day or two so they turn into like soap dough so I have a whole bunch of different colors so that's how I made the grapes and the once they're on top of the soap they do turn hard but the, it's soap so when you soap with it even though some of it's gonna fall off <laughs> it turns to soap now look at that marbling that's what I wanted I could have done plain boxes for my checker pattern but I didn't want to just stick to plain color so I wanted a marbling and I accomplished that. Here you see me cutting it in a different direction because I'm realizing that's the part that's gonna show to make sure there's marbling and it's there. There, The dough does look kind of wonky. Um, what I would do differently is maybe I'll use a silicone mold instead so that the shape of the loaf is better. And also I need to make sure that I have sodium lactate on hand Sodium lactate is like a liquid salt that you can put in your soap batter and it helps to harden your bar and help you to unmold it cleaner <laughs> so you don't have chunks of your soap coming out when you're trying to unmold it. Right now I am cutting my cubes. So these are in half an inch by in half an inch. Um, unfortunately, my cutter doesn't have a measure on it. There are some cutters that have it where you can see the height and you can cut it, but I had to use a ruler. Um, but I'm, my boxes are half an inch by half an inch by half an inch. Um, for the advanced category, you had to have boxes that were less than an inch big. Um, so that's why you see me cutting them so small and guys there's so much measurement that goes into this I didn't show it in this video if you're interested in seeing like the detailed measurement of how to do this um, I could do another video below but I have to see that there's people interested in seeing it is it's kind of detailed and it's tedious but you know you have to prepare but there it is measurements that you have to take for this See, that's kind of some of my measurements. I had to measure the width and the length of my mold and calculate a half an inch for each box and how much of those cubes I was gonna need and how much ounces I would need to pour for each layer. It's, it's not hard, it's just tedious, but you get a beautiful bar of soap if you do it. As you can see here, I'm working on the marble squares in my design. 
Now my design drawing is not exactly how the soap is. Um, what I didn't show you is there was an error that I made in the calculation. So I had to make some adjustments to it. But I wanted you guys to see what areas I was working on. Again, you could have did plain soap, plain colored. I just wanted to be different. I wanted something different. And there is a calculation on how to calculate how much ounces are in each cube and how many ounces you need to make up to cover each cube. Again, if you guys wanna see it, I can do a detailed video, but right now I'm just demonstrating how I created this beautiful soap. you see me removing all the spacers um, I wanted to keep the spacers in so that the sole doesn't shift um, and it maintain a square on the inside like on the liquid soap part um, it, it, it worked I could have left them in and cut them off when I finished making the soap but I decided to take them out I kind of wish I left them in because I think that it, the soap would have been more square each liquid layer that you do you want to make sure that it sets up enough where it can hold those those cube blocks that you see me laying in now um, otherwise it's just gonna sink and then your design is gonna look like you know the squares are sinking and things like that so you want to make sure that's set up what was suggested um, when we did the um, contest was um, it was suggested that we use a fragrance that sets up um, quick like so there's some fragrances that will actually have your soap set up solid pretty quick and you could use those to put into the mold look at this foolishness look at this so here's the mistake that I made with this right you in each layer as tedious as it's gonna be 
each layer that you pour you need to mix your lye water solution and soap excuse me your lye water solution with your oils and butters you need to mix them separately for each layer to prevent this foolishness from happening so i pre-mixed this in the beginning and then it started to you know set up and now i'm sitting here not wanting to waste the soap and i'm trying to get it to go in between the layers the good news with this is that it's set up already so i don't have to wait for it to set up to lay the next layer on top of it the bad news is that this can cause air pockets so i'm running the risk of some of that soap not going all the way into those crevices and when i cut the soap i run the risk of getting air pockets so my suggestion to you is if you're trying to do this technique as tedious as it is mix your layer when you're ready to lay it do not mix it ahead of time and have it sit there because you're going to run into this issue Now, when I did the soap, the buffalo plaid technique, it was demonstrated and taught by um, a soaper, and um, her name was Amy. Her name is Amy Bautista. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and I'm gonna put her information below. She that she makes soaps, but she did an excellent job um, in showing how to do this buffalo plaid technique. And as a matter of fact, when I showed you guys. Where to go on the Soap Challenge Club Club page? It was her design that you saw um, listed, but she's really she did a really good job in demonstrating how to do it. So many no-nos in this video. There's no no the previous scene. I'm there with no gloves on. I think that's when I kept getting questioned by everybody in the house. And I just I don't know. I just got distracted, which is why it's so important to do soaping when you're not gonna be distracted. Because I mean I thought I wasn't gonna be distracted, but you know, silly me. And in this one, I don't have my lo no long sleeves on, and that's a no-no too. So Guys, just make sure you wear your gloves and long sleeves because if this wet soap gets on the skin, it initially starts to tingle and itch and then it starts to burn and that's not what you want. Um, so right now I'm just trying to set up like a bed um, to lay my soap dough on um, so it can just attach to something. Now guys, when, you know, if you're doing this as a gift or what have you, just note that these 
end beds probably are going to just fall off but it is soap um so it's not like it can't um, break down or anything like that it really is just beautiful to add to soap it's just so different makes the soap look nice glamorous elegant and also you know you have this in your bathroom your guests are using it it's just a beautiful scent I use Jade um, by the way by Brambleberry and my goodness this fragrance smelled great in the soap it smelled so good some of the white that you see on the embeds guys is arrowroot powder is similar to cornstarch and I use that to press the soap dough in the molds and it aids in helping to prevent the soap dough from sticking to the silicone mold and I can like un you know release it quicker um, from the uh, the mold itself but I really liked how this soap came out I thought it was just pretty elegant and nice and you know trying to put these grapes on to try to make it look like a vineyard <laughs> Are you guys ready to see what this soap looks like after the cut? All right now, hold on to your Gouda cheese and grapes. Let's see what we got. Oh, 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 oh. whoa, that looks awesome yes the size are wonky and we're gonna fix that but look at that that look like a plaid blanket oh beautiful and the scent you guys the scent oh my goodness it smells so delicious look at that look at the marbling um look at the white look at the purple 
the squares are not as perfect as I would like them to be, but it's soap, you guys. It's soap. It's different. It's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Oh, beautiful. The sides were misshapen because remember I poured in that soap and it was already set up so make sure when you pour in your layers is liquid soap and you know your soap hasn't set up and I just want to wake up the top and look at that just a little steam oh it look like berries don't it look like berries on top of this soap oh my goodness that's beautiful This is why I don't panic when I make mistakes in soap because there's always a way to make it better. There's always a way. It's just soap and look at that. That's a beautiful bar of soap. Beautiful. Here I'm just going to bevel the side so it looks even more polished and more presentable and elegant and look at that. That is, man listen to me. If you guys are saying that's not elegant and beautiful, I don't know what to tell you. I just don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. This is a creative bar of soap and it's different. It's it's just something about creativity and seeing the beauty in creativity, you guys. Beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful and it smells awesome. If you decide to make this soap, please tag me on Instagram cuz I want to see your version of what you thought of because this design is beautiful. to just step it up another notch with the creativity and the beauty of the soap so I'm adding the grape embeds to the front I'm using melted cocoa butter but you guys if you have soap that you've already have sitting like if you made soap and you had some left over in one of your pots and containers you can use that to glue it on and it work fine just keep in mind that this probably is going to just with the first wash come off but when you're presenting this as a gift or you're selling it it just adds so much elegance look at that Not 
bad for doing this technique for the first time. I definitely think I need practice to improve. But you guys can't leave. You need to pull up some wine, relax, mellow out, and click on another one of my videos. Protect your energy, drink your wine, and I'll see you in the next video. See you later, guys. Thank you.